internet, welcome back to Rizal's TV. Today we are taking a much needed break from the plot project I've been working on for the past 500 years. I'm going to be doing a, I'm going to be doing a tear down. So we've got this to have a look at. Let's go. So what we hear Harbin is a delightful flatbed scanner that I got from the same place I got the printer from that I tore down many many moons ago. It cost me the princely sum of five of Her Majesty's finest pounds, which is about hmm, this much in US dollars. Now, like always, before we get right into the guts of her, let's make it important we have to do regarding this. Let's start pulling out screws. Oh, that's fun. No screws under it at all. Okay, good, okay. Put nothing under here. Now, normally I wouldn't have bothered buying something like a flatbed scanner because there's not much going on inside it. I've taken one apart before, it's just one motor, a big long strip of sensors which scans across like a camera really and uh, scans the page. But this one had a few little extra bits which I quite liked. I'll flip this up. Correct end. First I've got the Z fold thing, which is pretty standard nowadays. But inside there's this. I'll take this right bit off. I mean, normally you get that, like on any other scanner. But this has a film strip scanner inside it. It's not that exciting on its own, but there's these wires going up behind it. I want to know what that does, because I think it's an LED panel behind this. And if all of this illuminates, that could be fun. I'm trying to work out how to get that powered. Be a nice little backlight thing. That comes out of there, you put your film in there. I don't know if there's different modes that let it know that there's film in it or something, I've no idea. Let's start putting this apart, actually let's undo these. See a screw, remove a screw. under here I wonder probably even more screws who knows kind of like Chuck Norris's beard underneath it's just another fist oh here we go ah oh, that's good right so here's the hinges oh we've got a little ferrite bead why would it need a ferrite bead it's just a light panel that's interesting. Is it sending pulses? Is it PWMing the brightness? Okay. Let's get these off as well. So the cable for the LED, LED panel, I'm pretty sure that's what there is, goes under here, loops around this, and sort of retains it in place. Oh, the noise. It goes into this socket in here. So we'll pull on this. It will come out. Here we go. And then this one comes out of here.
Блин. Oh, that's interesting, got a little plastic sleeve holding all of this in. So that comes out somehow. Good grief. Here we go. Yes, here we go. Right. Now I can carry on taking the lid off. Right, I got the lid off. Lots of spring me things. And this is interesting. This is why this is a ribbon cable and not just a simple power cable. And that's why it needed this ferrite. There's not an LED under this. It's actually a cold cathode phospholuminescent bulb. So let's pull all this off and have a look at that. I reckon this is just a single strip light along here. Cool. Focus. Excellent. Ooh. Okay. Oh. Okay, I didn't expect this. Have a better look at this. So this ribbon cable comes into this box, which I'm guessing has a high voltage generator for this tube. And it looks to be a single tube running down the length of this because you've got a pink wire here going down to this end and in barely visible quite blown out white wire which goes down to this end this should all come out and uh, these screws can come out and all this comes off let's have a look at that so all the screws are out and I've got the contrast turned up a bit so you can actually see Everything that's white coloured. Uh, oh. So simple bulb, basic pl plastic reflector in there, just shines light out of there fairly evenly into the negative. So that the flat scanner then scans underneath. And this bit, this is where the magic happens. A little high voltage circuit in here. So it needs one amp at 25 volts. I wonder if I've got something I can power that. That'll be fun. I'll have a look at it, mate. Let's get all this out. Mm. Oh, diffused plastic. Here you go, look. That could be useful for other projects. Actually, that will be useful for other projects. I've got a project planned I could use, use this for, so that's very handy. It should just push out. Uh, yeah, here we go. Look. Double sort of taped in. Very handy. Okay. So, despite having four connectors on this ribbon cable, I think there's four. Mm, yep, looks of it. Actually, no, there's five. Got two that side and three this side. There's only two contacts. So there's a positive, positive and negative high voltage circuitry here, output here to this bulb. So later on, I'm gonna see if I can power that up. That could be fun. Oh -ho. Right, I've got several power packs from various things. Some of them from laptops. And this one puts out 18 volts at three and a half amps. And it's got bad wires. So let's try that. Right, this is powered up. Blue should be positive, I think. And this side here goes to the fuse, so this should be positive here. So, uh, <laughs> isn't it at all dodgy? Let's not touch the high voltage side. This is really tricky. Hmm. Okay, right, let's turn this light off. And there we go. Wow, the corona discharge, you can hear the fizzing. But yeah, I don't know if I can block out light from the window. 
try this. Yes. So that's a fun little thing for a future project. If we'll ever use it, but at least it works. That's good. Right, this is apparently all unclips to get inside it, but there is two screws here, secretly hidden under that little flap. Let's just get rid of these and then lift the cover off. There shouldn't be much in the way now. Got a little pile of screws and stuff going on outside. The shot of the camera over there. Just take it there, look at that. Magnetic screws, always a plus. Ooh. Oh, okay, it slides and then sort of. Hey! So, nice bit of glass. Almost certainly toughened glass, so this is going to be impossible to cut down to size. And I really do mean impossible. Not like difficult or tricky or hmm. No, actually impossible. Any sort of stresses you put on the glass when you're trying to cut it, it just basically explodes instantly. Quite fun, as I have learned. Right, first thing, and I could have expected this after the top thing was a vacuum fluorescent tube or a cold cathode. Not a CFL tube for sure, I should say. This one is also a CFL tube. So this gives out the light, hits the page, whatever you're scanning, the light goes back into here. And then it looks like there's going to be all sorts of mirrors underneath it that go to a sensor, which is, I'm guessing, this end. Because modern scanners just have a continuous strip of sensor, and it's really, really thin. And it's probably about not even two finger thickness. Very, very lightweight, very small thing that goes across. This is quite a big, bulky thing. So I'm guessing there's mirrors and lenses inside here, and a smaller sensor here. So everything sort of converges onto this point. And that acts like a single pixel word camera that just sort of scans the entire page. Oh, Weeble wobble. And there's only this holding it. Big bit of machine steel rod. And that's also very useful. You've probably seen in my other projects that I use lots of lo these little shiny poles and stuff in things. And this is where I get them from. Things like this. Printers. All sorts of machinery I take apart. All these rod sections, they're very, very precisely ground. I'll save them all and they get used in other stuff. Right, this is, ah, uh, there's more clips. Uh, oh, here we go. Spudges to the rescue. Hey, excellent. No dramas, here we go. So what is happening is, we've got this which went on top of a reflector to push light up off of the page we're scanning, that light comes back down. Bounces off of this mirror, comes across, bounces off of this mirror. And then finally this one, well that do not actually finally, but there's this mirror. And there's another one underneath here. And then there's a sensor somewhere down in there. Now one of these mirrors, I'm not sure which one, possibly this one, is ever slightly bent so it can converge these rays. I mean, actually I think they're all bent because you've got this wide one here, and this slightly smaller one, then this slightly smaller one here. It's all very confusing. So there's more optics underneath here, but I need to get this off to get this off the end of it to turn upside down to have a look at it all. So I'm gonna be unscrewing uh, where are we this next and leave here and then all of this and then I can lift bits out. screws out. This has a light cutting of grease on it, which I've never really seen before on machine rods that have carriers like that. Not in printers or scanners or anything, so I don't know if this is just a 
an old method of doing it. But nowadays we have like a nylon bushings and stuff so you don't have to really grease it. Imagine this has bushings pressed into it. I think they're pressed in. Sort of hard plastic. Yeah, not sure. Anyway, let's have a look at the optics. Got that grease all over me. Okay, so light bounces off of that, then this, then that. Underneath of that, into there. And then, oh, oh, okay, there's the other mirror. And, oh wow, there's all kinds of interesting stuff going on. Let's see if I can unhook all of this. Oh boy. Let's get these out. Mm. That one. See, I looked at these mirrors and I couldn't see any bending them. I took them outside and I shot the light off of them onto the wall and I still just got a straight beam of light so maybe they're being bent in the carrier like just ever so slightly if you can bend them just enough like that and it'll do it you know, let's not drop the delicate bits of glass oh, yeah, let's put you there so it's very strange I can tell the optical path but I can't see how the light is bent round. Unless there's some physical, a basic physics thing that I'm not getting for some reason. That's the lamp. Oh, I've got a little nylon. With a nylon or Teflon bushing. I think it's nylon. And that runs on this. That little edge there. So, the bar, go, go, blah, the bar goes through that bit there, that rod rides on that bit so it keeps it all level it trams back and forth uh. hmm oh ah right this looks like a bit when it comes up uh, yep and this Finally, and he's unplugged. All right, brilliant. Oh, this is interesting. Got this wrapped around. Oh, that keeps it under tension. Got it in place there. Fantastic. off of this yeah this is de definitely not your um, average scanner which is why I got this one for the teardown because I thought it's quite old and it's got it's got quite a lot of stuff in it that nowadays just is pretty obsolete and it's quite over engineered as I say nowadays you'll have you'll have just a simple sensor strip running the entire width of the area to be scanned and an LED bulb It'll actually be one LED right at the end, and then the reflective strip that carries that light all the way down to the other end. But this is something completely different. Oh, this looks like the air. This is another. So this is another transformer that drives this. I'm guessing this is also 25 volts. It's all many sense changing the topology. Doesn't say on this one, I don't know what I can see anyway. But I'm guessing it's the same and then positive and negative. It just goes into there. So that other way around, here we go. So plug power into that and that lights up. That's pretty handy. So that's something else to keep for a future project. Not particularly efficient light, but it's fun to have and it was essentially free if you factor in the cost of the scanner, which has been stripped down anyway. Five quid. It's quite a lot of parts out of it. So to recap, we've got light coming in down from the light here, bounces around 
ends up down this gap off of that mirror and now we're on this side and we've got what looks like a lens assembly in here and if I take this off yeah. oh that's on there yep gonna need a bigger screwdriver This is probably very carefully aligned so it all goes into here and it's all focused properly and everything else. Because it's essentially a camera, it's just taking a strip of an image instead of like a whole page. That's not coming out of there particularly well. Assembly. Ooh, okay. And the final sensor is inside this. Actually, if I get the light just right in there, you can probably just about see the pins on the sensor. Right, let's work out if I can get this off. Back in a bit while I get some more tools. Right, so I've got this off. That's what it looks like inside. Final lens, final optical path rather, of that mirror into that little gap. Uh, can you just about see it? Probably if I do that, uh, there it is, kind of. And that light goes into here. And this is a one dimensional, in fact, because I can get it and it focuses still. No idea. Is that focusing? Probably a little bit. But you basically got a strip of light sensitive pixels inside here and circuitry on the back of it. I'll get this off in a bit, I think. Can it clip off? Ah, let's try this. Uh, I think it's soldered on, not sure. There's no screws I can see in there. Oh, here we go, look, there's solder tapes there. But there's some circuitry down inside there. And that sends that data along these lines into here and into this board under here finally into the computer all right let's get this off uh -huh. getting right down into the layers now I'm trying to work out how this comes off because i've taken all the screws and stuff off i don't know if it's just on the clips or anything this is a screw from underneath yeah nope. couple of screws here, here. let's see oh this is fun I'm down on this end you've got a slotted optical sensor it's just there so when this moves back this way something where is it, engages with this uh, that little tab there cuts the beam of light and it works out that that's now in the precise position it needs to be to start and it can carry on that way. So it's like a zero sensor. Which is handy. Oh, okay this is good. Oh, killy dokily, it is now the next day. The battery in my monitor screen decided to die, and the camera battery wasn't far behind, so I had to charge them both overnight because the monitor battery takes quite a long time to charge. So I took the opportunity to take everything apart, and I've got everything pieces, and I can show you what the pieces are. So here we've got the optical assembly for the scanning head. We've got the CFL bulb, the driver for it. Shining light on the page, which bounces off this mirror, then this one, and this one, and this one, through this lens, and onto the center here. And this is a function, this was what was converting the light from here to here, that's why these mirrors are smaller. I thought you'd need a bent mirror to converge the image down, and you could do that, but it'd be harder to do, and probably more expensive and awkward and everything else. 
so it's just got a single lens just pulling the image in at a certain point and they don't have to be smaller and smaller they're just made that way to save glass I imagine because you've got this quite close to the lens everything over here is not going to be seen by this and this is essentially the camera it's one pixel wide this way and I imagine several thousand pixels in this direction and that sends data out through those sockets there which into which plug flat flex cable and there's all this driver circuitry on the back for multiplexing the pixels and all the rest of it and for making the clock pulses and for talking to the main computer board I'll see if I can get a really really close shot of inside of this hopefully I'll have a go okay this is crazy I did not expect to see this at all what I've actually got here this gold pet part you can see just under there and this is how small this is man this is a um, cocktail stick slash toothpick whatever you want to call it now the gold section a little yellow stripe is the control chip for the sensor array and the sensor array runs the entire width of this thing it's got thousands upon thousands of little tiny pixels and there's actually three other rows after the gold control chip and they are three separate sensors for red green and blue now modern scanners there's only a single strip of pixels just measures grey value and the LED that shines on it because new ones don't have CFL bulbs they have LEDs they're red green and blue LEDs so they shine one colour then another then another cycle around red green blue red green blue red green blue per line it, that it's scanning but this it's only got white light so it needs the three separate pixels which I didn't think about when I'm looking down inside this so you can actually see quite clearly and I'll post a very close up picture as well three separate lines blue I've got the green and then the red and then the gold control chip see that's why I love these teardowns it's just a whole voyage of discovery finding out things I never would have thought of before oh and by the way this thing runs off a 9 volt battery Boom. <laughs> the rest of the stuff I've got pals in comparison compared to that, but I'll show you anyway. This is a driver board for the entire thing. So I've got a USB socket this end, and one of these goes to the motor to move back and the carriage back and forth. The other one goes to the socket for one of the flat flex cables. So that's a sort of extension for that. Got a basic switch matrix for the front panel. It's interesting because you have what we've got here seven switches, and there's only, from what I could tell, five connections. I'm guessing they didn't have enough pins on microcontroller, so they've had to use this thing to sort of multiplex the switches together. Bring it out to five pins from seven switches. That's pretty good. This is a stepping motor which moves the carriage back and forth. Yeah, we got a better view. It's all geared down so I can move very, very, very tiny amounts because it's got to move one pixel at a time. And you saw how small the pixel was in this, how wide it was this way. So it's got to move one bit at a time across the page. And it's good because it's an all in one unit. There's no, it doesn't need anything else to hold bits together or hold gears in place or anything. So I can use that for something else. I've even got the timing belt here. Which wraps around that, and of course, the idler gear that goes on the other end. So, I could use that for parts for a 3D printer, for example, or a CNC, or pretty much anything you wanted. As long as it's fairly light load, you just pull that tight, drive the step motor around, and you can move this pretty accurately, albeit very slowly. We've got a precisely ground machine steel rod we can use for again we can use it for a thing for a 3d printer oh, it's a very flat very straight guideline so it can make a thing that we move back and forth and there's two more rods in the lid as well which I need to get out but they're way down in there all of those are safe because they're always used I mean these ones 
this one you pretty much got to use as is because it's a very thick piece it's probably going to be quite hard steel to try and drill through or cut or anything else so you've got to really cut it down unless you have a proper proper tool for it and I don't so that's got to be used as is don't know what I'll use it for but I'm sure it'll appear in a future project we shall see so that was a teardown of a very old computer flatbed scanner not sure what I'm going to use these parts for yet some of them I may even turn into art pieces that could be even another video how about that so that's it for this week thank you very much for watching if you've watched this far if you like the video give it a great big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe leave me in the comments down in the doobly doo if you have any questions or anything else you want to suggest anything you want to see torn down share the video around because that really helps out the channel quite a lot as always thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week take care